AACTE has chosen one of the initiatives of the Ohio Deans Compact for its innovations inventory, incentivizing innovative practice. This video describes that work. We begin with a brief description of the Dean's Compact, then turn to a discussion of the overall challenge. We end with a synopsis of the projects the Dean's Compact has incentivized and their progress to date. Sponsored by the Office for Exceptional Children at the Ohio Department of Education, the Ohio Dean's Compact brings together deans of colleges of education, faculty from those colleges, and PK-12 through partners to improve educator preparation across the state. Its mission is to promote shared understanding and collective action to improve learning and results for all children, especially those from marginalized groups, for example, students with disabilities, students who are economically disadvantaged. The Dean's Compact centers its work around the concepts of inclusivity, equity, and social justice. Its approach to the education of teachers, school leaders, and other school personnel reflects these commitments. Inclusive pedagogy and leadership improve schooling for all children. Nonetheless, marginalization and exclusion are far more common practices in American schools, including those in Ohio. That's the challenge. Pushing against prevailing practice and working from an established body of evidence, the Ohio Dean's Compact helps colleges of education, other state educators, and policymakers prepare pre-service teachers and school leaders to do much better. In particular, colleges of education need first to prepare teachers to work with all students in general education classrooms. Part of such preparation entails more focused learning of and practice with powerful types of pedagogy. Part of it involves learning to collaborate as members of instructional teams. Clearly this work can be very difficult. The change process can take time. It needs new generations of educators to sustain it, and its sustainability depends on parallel efforts to prepare educational leaders who understand what inclusivity, equity, and social justice require. In the initiative chosen by AACTE, the Dean's Compact awards grants via a peer-reviewed competition to colleges of education. Grants reflect four priorities. Priority one grants focus on the development of merged or blended teacher preparation programs, programs leading to dual licensure in a general and special education field. Priority two grants support significant redesign of educational leadership preparation programs. Priority three grants focus on preparation of educators to work with students with sensory disabilities. Priority four grants focus on simultaneous renewal through meaningful higher education, school district partnerships. The Dean's Compact priorities aim to unsettle conventional practice and educator preparation programs. They rock the boat. Priority One awards targeted the development of dual licensure programs. These programs prepare undergraduate or graduate candidates for a general education content area credential and a special education credential. But these programs don't just staple a special education preparation program together with a general education preparation program. The content must be integrated because the new programs must not significantly exceed the credit hour requirements of either the general education or the special education preparation program. These programs cannot simply increase students' course loads. Priority One grants were first awarded in 2013. The first round supported development of dual licensure programs from the ground up. Six teacher education units received awards to develop integrated undergraduate programs. Of the new dual licensure programs that funded institutions developed, two have been approved by the Ohio Department of Education, two are in the review process, one is working to overcome institutional roadblocks, and one dropped out. In 2015, the Compact awarded a second round of Priority One grants. In this round, awardees adopted or adapted one of the dual licensure models developed in the first round. First round Priority One awards went to the University of Akron, University of Cincinnati, University of Dayton, 
Kent State University, and Xavier University. Second round Priority One awards went to Marietta College, Ohio Dominican University, Ohio University, the University of Rio Grande, Shawnee State University, and Youngstown State University. Priority Two awards began in 2015. There were two strands identified in the request for applications. One strand, focusing on curriculum enhancement, involved incorporating collaborative and inclusive leadership practices and administrator preparation programs. The other addressed a complete overhaul of preparation program to foster inclusive instructional leadership practice within the credit hour constraints of the current traditional program. As evidence of the challenges that this priority implicated, the Dean's Compact had only one taker for the second strand, and that university eventually changed its focus from a complete overhaul to the less extensive work required for curriculum enhancement. Priority two grants went to the University of Cincinnati, Malone University, and Ohio Dominican University. One Priority Three Consortium Award was also awarded in 2015. It involved two institutions, Shawnee State University and the University of Rio Grande. Together, these institutions developed content supporting advanced preparation of special educators to help them provide better instruction to students with sensory disabilities. A fourth priority area was initiated as a spinoff of the Incentive Grant Program and offered simultaneous renewal grants to College of Education and PK-12 through partners so they could work together to create professional development materials relevant to the needs of both pre-service and in-service educators. Five partnerships were funded. One, Kent State University in partnership with the Kent City Schools. Two, the Salem campus of Kent State University in partnership with the East Liverpool City Schools. Three, Ohio University in partnership with the Wellston City Schools. Four, Shawnee State University in partnership with the Portsmouth City Schools. And five, Youngstown State University in partnership with the Campbell City Schools. The incentive grant efforts have had a significant impact on educator preparation in Ohio, but it's been challenging work. A study of the dual licensure initiative pointed to challenges associated with addressing multiple sets of accreditation standards, pulling together faculty members from different departments or silos, involving PK through 12 partners, designing effective clinical experiences, and working within the constraints imposed by university requirements and norms of practice. In the video footage provided on this slide, former Associate Vice Chancellor of P16 Initiatives, Rebecca Watts, discusses the value of the incentive grant work despite the challenges it faces. Dual licensure programs are possible, and we're proving it. When we have dually prepared educators in the field, we actually are uh, strengthening our ability to meet student needs by, by strengthening our teaching core in the state. The other benefit that we get to this inclusive practice is actually in our educator preparation programs themselves. Like I talked earlier about the silos that we've seen in addressing the needs of students, we have had parallel silos in our educator preparation programs. So by encouraging that programs prepare teachers in an inclusive way, we actually bring our faculty together as well and we strengthen our preparation programs for their own benefit as they move forward just as we strengthen the K-12 world for our students. Key among the challenges that we've had in transforming educator preparation programs to prepare educators for inclusive settings has been the need to really doubly prepare candidates. So we have candidates that are in essence going to have two licenses when they emerge from these programs. What we cannot do is just take two licensure programs and stack them on top of each other and ask candidates to complete those two programs. That will not get us where we need to get because it's just approaching two silos instead of embedding and incorporating that preparation for that candidate all along the way. 
It sounds easy enough to do, but it's difficult because from the faculty perspective in the preparation programs, we are asking them to fundamentally analyze and change what they have done for decades. This can be sometimes threatening as we ask people to change their practices. As we work through this, we have to think about change management and what that means for our educator preparation programs so that we can break down those silos in non-threatening ways where we bring the strengths of all to the table and, and make sure that we are keeping the best of the best and potentially eliminating some historic practices or even courses that we've had. And again, that's, that's one of the big challenges that we have is working through this change together in a collegial, collaborative way that results in truly transformed programs.